everybody we've seen blow up their, their account of any kind, they literally do this. They, they, this, is a, this is always present. It's, this is never missing from someone who learns to do this, okay? So I really wanna emphasize the importance of this lesson in particular, my friends, okay? So there's just three things. And two and three kind of are one of the, they're hand in hand. So kind of two things in a way. One is modeling. I don't mean modeling like you're maybe thinking. Modeling is almost like copying, but you are copying only certain aspects of other successful influencers' content. You're not copying word for word. You're not copying them exactly, but you're noticing what they're doing that's working. You're looking for things like their titles, their, their hooks. What are, what are their hooks? What are the topics they're talking about, writing about, speaking about, performing about? What topics have like the most views, have the most buzz on their channel? Because they've done a lot of experimenting and if like two or three or four or five pieces of content, maybe amidst the thousands they've created are doing heads and tails above the rest, there's something there. They've done all that legwork for you. Now you can borrow that idea, borrow that topic, borrow that title, borrow that thumbnail format. That's modeling, okay? And the way it works, it can work in a couple of ways. The way I do it personally is for me, it starts with an inspired idea. Like the more you start, more you commit to doing this, the more naturally you're gonna find yourself feeling like the, the tug and pull of the universe saying, you should talk about this. This is what your folks need to hear. And the idea kind of comes in almost a spiritual way. But in the past, I've been too naive, you could say, and I just take the idea and I would just express it in kind of a sloppy way. And once in a while, it would stick because I would get lucky. I was blind luck. But when I take that inspired idea and I funnel it into a proven framework, which is what requires modeling, if I take that inspired idea and I find a, a title that's already seemed to work and go viral and I infuse it with my inspired idea, it becomes kind of a marriage, you could say. And that is what we're talking about with modeling. And it can work in the opposite direction as well. And I do this sometimes as well when I don't have any inspirations coming through. I don't have any content ideas. So I just do some research. I do some modeling. I check out, you know, I check out different influencers that I've been to and I see what are they talking about? And I'll get some ideas, right? I'll get some ideas. I'm getting some framework ideas. And then from there, then, then my creative juices start flowing and I get some inspiration to where I see maybe Ralph Smart will say infinite waters. He's got a million, almost 2 million YouTube followers. Maybe he just made a video about opening your third eye. And I've been lately meditating on opening my third eye or something, you know, that, that would probably wouldn't happen these days. But, um, and maybe I'm like, okay, I like his title. This topic is doing well. I'll talk about my experience with opening my third eye. So again, you're only taking the framework is what we highly recommend. That is our personal opinion about what is ethical. And this is up for debate because we know people that will pretty much copy what other folks are doing almost verbatim. And unfortunately it does work, but it happens to us, especially Aaron, and we don't like it. It feels kind of, it's, it doesn't feel good to us because we put, it's our precious inspiration that we've done our best to get it to grow to a certain level. And then someone's literally maybe having no connection to it whatsoever, but they're blindly just doing it because it's worked. And, but there are people like that. I don't recommend you do that, but it does work. We've seen it. We've seen people piggyback on other big channels and uh, it's effective. But it ain't cool in our opinion. But it doesn't mean you should be sloppy either. It does mean we still emphasize you should model, you should use structures that already work, okay? And what I mean, what do I mean by structures? I mean, again, I mean by the topics. I mean by how often do people post? How long are their pieces of content, duration of a video or length of blog post? You know, just what, what, are, their, what are their hooks 
where there's stories like you want to just kind of like research people who are already light years ahead of you doing an amazing job in your general niche, your general category. And if you study people a little bit, not, not all day, a little bit, and you'll start to notice themes, you'll start to see connections will be start being made and you'll see maybe why what they're doing, what they're saying, why their frameworks are working. In fact, I'll tell you, I'll give an example from mine. People who have followed me. I discovered kind of by happenstance. No, actually it was from modeling. A long time ago, I saw a video in a very unrelated niche that was titled five things you should know about such and such. So I was modeling. I, I took that structure and I put it in front of my full moon energy updates. So five things you should know about the full moon coming up on such and such date. And for whatever reason, that worked. That took my YouTube, that took my full moon updates to a whole new level, my friends. But now if you type in full moon around the full moon, you'll see a lot of other influencers are saying five things to know, five things you must know, five people have borrowed their modeling me now because it works. So it's, it's like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like if everyone's doing it, you're really missing out if you're not doing it. Maybe you don't like the idea of this at all, which I, I can kind of understand, but we do it in a pretty honest and ethical way. We're just taking the structure and making it our own and we recommend that to you. But whether you like it or not, that is going to drastically improve the speed at which you grow your channel because you're, you're allowing you know, other influencers to do all this trial and error and then from there you're seeing the best of the best of the best of the best you're taking your own ideas and funneling it through those proven structures. It just speeds up the process. And what we recommend you do is find at least three. I normally would say five, but I found that five would be like where people wouldn't do it at all. So I'm going to reduce it to three, a minimum. Find three influencers in your same category that you resonate with, that you like, that are way ahead of you. For me, I got about 300. YouTube follower, 300,000. And I look up to like Ralph Smart sometimes when he has like 2 million followers. So you want to find people way ahead of the game who have been in the game for a long time. And you want at least three people you kind of spy on, not in a creepy way, but three people you take time once in a while to study, to gain inspiration. So a lot of the content you think is going to do really well doesn't. And it's always the ones that you're really not attached to that you don't care about that tend to go kind of crazy. It just seems to work that way. I don't know. Maybe there's a metaphysical hint there. I don't know. But regardless, I say all this for one, because it's like a very smart strategy to experiment, but two, to really help you be more emotionally detached from the ups and downs that are inevitably going to be there. A lot of your growth will come from you popping content, meaning randomly getting one of your contents to go viral or even semi viral. It can upgrade your entire platform. But the only way you do that is if you experiment and the fastest way to do that is to experiment with the foundation of modeling and your corner. In fact, the other day I had a, a nice woman come on to one of the coaching calls. And she was all like worked up about, I forgot what it was, but she was really just like not happy with something. And I said, oh, well, let me, I said, let me go into your YouTube channel right now. I just, I brought up her YouTube channel uh, and, and showed the whole class. And I was like, whoa, wait, wait, what's this? I ignored her problem and I was like, did you see this? One of her videos had 10,000 views only a few months ago. And she's kind of a newer channel. I was like, whoa, what are you doing? Why are we not talking about this? This is everything. Once you experiment, once you become product productive, once you stop being a perfectionist, once you stop taking things personally, you eventually will strike gold. It's just, it's a numbers game. And when you do, you don't want to say, oh, there it is. You want to like jump all over it and you want to analyze and say, why did this do well? What was the title like? How was my hook? What type of hook? What was I wearing? What the lighting like? Where was I located? What time of day did I post it? And then like a scientist, you break down and you make guesses as to why something did so well. 